So I want to discuss a little bit about this distinction between leadership and management because it is foundational thinking as well that um, many of us have management roles and manages around getting things done and following the system. We all follow the system, right? We live in a society. You drive the speed limit, you pay your taxes, you help your neighbor, you come to work, you fill out your timesheet or whatever is your version of a timesheet. You submit expenses and you manage the process, right? You are a participant in the system. <clears throat> and so the, the challenge is, is leadership is a little bit about upsetting that. And that becomes the challenge. Leadership and management are two different things. Managers can lead. And great leaders often have others who help them manage. Most of us are managers who are looking for the opportunity to lead. And so I put a few slides together to discuss this distinction of leadership versus management. So managers, and I don't mean that you have the title manager. I'm just saying that in your role you manage things. You manage to get to work on time. You manage to get the work done. You meet quality objectives. Managing is around planning, organizing, controlling, directing, monitoring. You make sure the system as designed happens. Right? That's the manager's role. And so if you are an active participant in doing what is supposed to get done, you are part of the management system. And good management is necessary. The absence of good management leads to chaos, leads to breakdown in the system. Now, if we just have managers, if there is no leadership, we will stagnate and do the things the way we've always done them. And the reason we'll do them that way is because the way we think about these things is the way we've always thought about them. And so this distinction is important. So managers color inside the lines. They follow the policies, rules, and they drive the status quo. And so this is a manager's picture. You see, isn't that nice? It's my uh, seven-year-old nephew's picture. And so we have somehow stripped from him his leadership capacity and taught him to conform. Isn't that what we do as parents? Yes, we say, this, this is how you color. He's like, OK, I got it. So he is part of a well-managed process. Leaders, on the other hand, they envision and they engage. They enable, they energize, they empower people. And they have vision values for change. Leaders are change agents. So the difference is one is following the system. The other is you're a change agent to drive the system to become better and more efficient. And I think it's the important distinction. There are times when we ought to all manage. You should put your income tax in every year. You should pay your taxes. You should participate in the system. You should vote. These are all parts of us managing within a system. But there are times in which we need to kind of push the system and color outside of the line, so to speak. The difference between leader leadership and management. Leadership sets direction, the vision, the strategies, where we're going, how we're going to get there. The manager, once they have a vision, they know the strategy, they develop the steps and the plans and the programs and the forms and the processes. As a safety advisor, you may be very much involved in the management of the process. You design the accident investigation form or you improve the accident investigation form. The leaders are setting the direction. And you've got to ask, what is the direction that we're going? Leaders align people. They motivate, mentor, inspire, change agents. Managers get it all together. They herd the ducklings and keep them all organized to get across the road. Uh, they, they control. Is control good? It's essential for you to achieve your goals. Control is part of the management process, and it's good. Absolutely. There's different types of pre-project control, during project control, post-event control. And so managers create predictability. Strong management systems get predictable results. So if you're going to choose one stock, one type of stock guaranteed to produce a return year on year on year, what would that be in Canada? Bank stock, bank or insurance. And why is it bank and insurance? Because they have got such strong systems. They have systems for their systems. They are so strict and regimented and rules. 
just to open an account, you got to show blood test and ID, and they have got systems for their systems. They are managed to death. Now, from time to time, banks do crazy things, like Royal Bank ventured into the U.S. or no, sorry, the South America lost a few billion and made a few billion. From time to time, they do do some crazy things, but by and large, they follow a management system. On the other side, this leadership side is companies that you see go through great change. So this is. This is leadership in action. This is my two-year-old niece. This is her picture. I want her to draw a picture of our house. So I gave her a box and said, there you go. There's a box, because that's a manager's view of a house as a square. And she went to town. I think that's beautiful, isn't it? That is leadership in action. Or what it is is it's unencumbered, a person unencumbered by management systems. Now, I'm not advocating for craziness, because that's what that is. That is like a crazy piece of artwork. But what I am advocating for is controlled change. There's got to be something better about the way your company does things tomorrow. Isn't there? Isn't there something better you could be doing? How are you going to drive change? How are you going to articulate the vision? Where are you going to have to push on the system to get it to move? I can tell you this one connection that I think we need to make early is this need for trust. You need to develop a trusting relationship with the key stakeholders in your organization. The key stakeholders are the ones that are going to allow for change to happen. They have to trust you. It's when there's transparency. Transparency fosters a diversity of ideas, which reinforces openness, which enables. And it's a cycle which either spirals to a very positive position, where highly trusting environment. People are willing to take small risks and know that they will be rewarded. And I don't mean financially, but recognized for having taken the risk and pointed into a direction. This can also spiral out of control until it's closed. There is no openness. There is no transparency. There is no diversity of idea. There is no risk taking. And that is a, a monotonous bureaucracy. And some organizations are there. Um, federal government is close to a monotonous bureaucracy. There is some room for improvement, but boy, changes happen slowly and they move slowly. So this new way of thinking is recognizing management versus leadership and your capacity to drive change, consensus building, and sort of through a, a sensible and controlled risk taking. You got to look at where you are in the organization and adjust your communication leadership style consistent with uh, that capacity to influence and drive change. So at the end of the day, we're trying to get important things done. We're trying to get stuff done. We need managers to instill good operational processes, and we need leaders to instill an inspiring vision. Now is a time of great change, change that we have to deal with, uh, but the, perhaps that we weren't quite ready for. And so this is an opportunity when you look at the economy, certainly in Calgary, and I'm sure it's in lots of other places where you're from. <laughs> um, but we see. Uh, great challenges ahead. And I think there's lots of things to get done, and so we really need some, uh, some leadership uh, going forward. So I wanted to just create an alignment with some of these ideas around leadership theory and management practices. And so as you can see, it's a sliding scale. There's a sliding scale between being highly management control, more on the autocratic end of things, and so if you work in the government, if you work for the Treasury branch, if you work for Revenue Canada, it is a rules-based job. Have you ever talked to Revenue Canada about anything? Yeah, they got it all figured out. So this is the way it's going to be. And so the leadership style, which applies to that group, is highly autocratic. They are driving the process forward. This is the way it's going to be. At the other end of the spectrum, where there's total employee control, is some of these companies that require huge amounts of creativity and risk taking. Like I've ever seen the um, uh, documentaries on the Google campus and how <clears throat> it's really hard to tell if anyone's actually doing any work. Uh, a, a friend of my daughter's father owns a, uh, a company that does a lot of online uh, development of courses and software and things like that. When you go into their office, they got foosball tables and table tennis tables and cappuccino machines, and you're really not sure if anyone's doing any work. 
and he's the only one that has an office, and everyone else just seemed to be fooling around, is the best way I would describe it. And so they're very much in a free run, free reign style, and, and it suits what they're trying to get done. And so my point here is, is that there's not a single leadership style that's appropriate. Leadership styles are appropriate to uh, purpose, intent, and the need for functionality. And so if you applied an uh, autocratic leadership style to those software and code writers, you'd probably get very little productivity. Similarly, if, if we applied a free reign style to our federal government employees, I'm not sure any taxes would get collected, and it would be a, a free fall from there. And so the, the use of this graphic, I guess, is to, to hopefully illustrate that the range of leadership styles apply to the many ranges of management control needed uh, consistent with the type of system that you are, are trying to manage. So leaders do the right things. They promote ideas. They inspire. They create opportunities, and they're visionaries. Whereas managers do things right, and they like structure. They coordinate. They direct. They react. They're responsive to situations, and they provide resources. And so we all have a role in terms of our management, but what we need to look for is our opportunity to take on that leadership perspective. Okay, so we need to make that distinction. I can tell you numerous times, particularly in association type meetings, we will be discussing something and we are really looking for a leadership solution and yet people revert back into their management thinking, saying we will continue to do it this way. And we need to look for the opportunities to say, what is a different way to do it? What is a change that we could try? Where's the opportunity for a new and different ways?